guys? Today we're going to be taking a look at the Falkneven F1 and talking about it as far as a uh, as far as what I think about this little guy and whether or not it's worth picking up. Okay, so uh, as always, please don't forget to comment, like, share, subscribe, check out the Patreon and Instagram. The support, whether it's behind the scenes or not, really does mean a lot and everything is appreciated. Uh, so, as always, let's dig into this. Okay, so like I said, today we're doing a video on the Falkneven F1. Now, this blade is originally marketed as a pilot survival knife, and while I'm slightly dubious of that terminology, uh, you know, just generally wilderness survival, I don't really love blades that are under 10 inches for survival specifically. This blade is definitely probably one of the better pilot survival knives. As you guys know, my strong love and affinity for things like the Gerber LMF2, which is also marketed as a similar kind of pilot survival knife if i had to you know if i had an option i would certainly take the f1 over the lmf2 but um you know as far as it goes probably not the best wilderness survival knife and maybe even not the best pilot survival knife depending on what your aspects or what you need done or what you need what goals and objectives you have to meet but overall as far as this blade goes especially from a bushcraft standpoint and kind of a camping blade standpoint i think that's where the f1 really starts to kind of go into its own and i think that the size and overall uh, blade shape being a convex grind and like i said overall blade size and handle size it lends itself more to being a compact blade that you could run in tandem with something like a hatchet a small saw and make a really good kind of three tool uh, option that when you know when used in conjunction with a hatchet or axe and a saw this actually becomes a pretty potent tool now i think one of the biggest advantages this knife has going for it and an advantage that i think a lot of people overlook with this blade is the fact of its stainlessness and this blade runs right around 100 maybe 120 dollars and when you factor that in with it, as far as, you know, a blade that is around $120 to $100 and its stainlessness, it actually really starts to be a pretty solid option because a lot of the knives that are in this same price range, things like the Topps B.O.B., uh, Brothers of Bushcraft, Fieldcraft is a great knife in the same price range and stuff, but is a 1095 high carbon. And so... Knives like the Bracamo, knives like the Dragonfly, which are all ironically tops knives, but even things like the SC4, the SC6, you know, are all in this similar price range and maybe similar use case, but are all 1095 high carbon. So if you are in a more uh, damp environment, if the more humid environment, or you spend a lot more of your time on the water's edge, the Falkneven F1 definitely has a kind of standout feature in the fact that for the price point, it's really one of the only solid stainless options out there. Of course, you can go up in price to things like the Bark River Knives Bushcrafter that uses CPM 3V, or you can step up to, you know, more expensive semi-custom blades that are more stainless. But as far as in the $100 price range this is pretty hard to be for a stainless option that's one of the biggest pros i think to the falcon even f1 other pros that i would consider to it of course it is a full tang really rock solid blade but what i like about the handle similar to how i've uh, talked great greatly about the falcon even 81's handle is because this is a full tang but the handle is fully rubberized it's not going to provide any cold to the touch so if you are looking for something that is uh, going to be used in cold climates and cold conditions cold environments this is going to be another standout option for that but this is gonna be another standout option for that because it is not going to get your hand as cold it is going to be more temperature neutral so that's a big pro to it of course it's a big pro that's full tang and uh, those are some of the things that I like the most about this blade so what are some things I don't necessarily love well the convex grind is gonna be the first one because I think that's more of a kind of neutral thing you either like convex grinds or you don't a lot of people may be unfamiliar with full convex grinds as well so if you are in either of those categories or if you are in any of 
uh, or if you are in either of those categories, this may be a detractor. If you're not familiar, I would definitely recommend trying to gain some familiarity with convex grinds because they do not perform poorly. As you can see, I can certainly make this convex grind work, but it does take a little bit of training and I do have several other convex grinds such as the Falcon Even A1, uh, the Bark River Knives Aurora, my JBK Layman, all of those are convex ground blades as well, but they are just a little bit different and unusual to use if you're used to working with full flat, flat grinds, scandy grinds, it's going to be a little bit different. So that's the first one. Like I said, convex grinds are not necessarily my favorite, but they are certainly usable. Um, as next thing for me is going to be the blade thickness. And I think this is where a lot of people ding Falknevens because this is a laminated piece of steel. So, you know, you have two really stainless pieces of steel and in the middle is, or sandwiched in between the middle is a VG10 piece of stainless steel so because of that triple layer laminate process it ends up making the thickness on the spines of really all falcon evens but especially the f1 um, a little bit thicker than you might be expecting and so for that reasoning it is a little bit um it's a little bit on the thicker side, definitely not my favorite, but it is certainly not a sharpened pry bar, especially the way that they do their convex grind. They do really remove a lot of metal from the very cutting edge and take it down nicely. So it is still a very slicey blade, but it is going to be a little bit heavier and a little bit thicker. So just something to be anticipated though, in performance, I am glad to say that it really is still a very slicey, very slender blade. And you guys can see the way that it just peels material right up off of wood. It certainly is going to perform well. Just something to keep in mind. So this is the leather sheath, and uh, I also have the Thermarun sheath or plastic sheath, whatever you'd like to call it. But I'm definitely not the largest fan of either sheath, whether it's the plastic one or the leather one. They are very nice as far as traditional, especially the leather sheath is a very traditional uh, leather sheath. And if you do like leather sheaths, this is actually probably a pretty good option, especially for cold weather because of the large overflap that's easy to access with mittens and gloves. But as far as it goes, uh, both of these sheaths are very old school so what that means is there's not a lot of mounting options you've heard me kind of praise se for their sheaths because even though they are just run-of-the-mill kind of plastic sheaths they have a lot of mounting options you can mount them scout style traditional belt style wear them as neck knives if they're small enough and uh, you know there's many different ways to mount and carry those uh, knives with their factory sheaths with the falcon even sheaths especially like i said the leather one there's really not much you can do to this this. There's not a lot of attachment points or anything to to help you carry this knife in a plethora of different ways. Now, once again, that's not necessarily a deal breaker for most people, but it's something to keep in mind that you may, if you want to carry this thing, like I said, scout style or in a non-traditional style, like a Baldrick rig, you're going to have to go aftermarket and get a Kydex sheath custom made for the knife, which kind of sucks because Falcon even knives, as kind of earlier mentioned, they're not super, super expensive, but they are also not super cheap either, especially things like the A1 in the S1 because those ones are around $150 to $200. So, you know, spending that much and then still having to spend another $20 to $30 on a sheath also kind of sucks. But uh, just another con that I would say, if it is something that uh, will affect you, do keep it in mind. Now, overall, what I think of the uh, F1 as far as it goes, I think this is really a fantastic and kind of slept on bushcrafting camp knife for stainless purposes. You know, if you are one of those people that works in humid conditions or around water a lot, the F1 does have a lot to offer for those types of people. And once again, for the price point, it is very hard to find solid, robust stainless knives for under $100. And granted, like I said, this one is not under $100, but the F1 usually is right around $100 to $110. So for that near, like just over $100, you are getting into a pretty solid, pretty reliable stainless option out or probably one of the best out there as a rule. So overall guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video as always. God bless. And I'm out.